Hello and welcome to another video on this series where I construct a Karelian dress from the beginning of the 19th century. Before even starting this whole project, I visited the Craft Museum of Finland. It is located in Jyväskylä, about three hours drive from my home. The drive was worth it as I spent hours examining beautiful folk costumes and other handicrafts in a museum that was practically empty due to it being in the middle of the week and, well, the virus. The main attraction for me was the small Karelian costume exhibition by Lena Jaskelainen, featuring reproduction seraphim dresses and other garments from the 19th and early 20th century. The main museum also featured some lovely examples of Karelian embroidery and other Finnish folk costumes. The accessories often featured with Karelian dress are aprons, pockets, caps and scarves. As I wanted to try making Karelian embroidery, I decided to decorate my pockets with it. Traditional Karelian embroidery is similar to embroidery in many East European countries. It is most often done with red thread on white evenly woven linen. Several different stitches were used such as cross stitch and chain stitch, but perhaps the most valued were the patterns done in double running stitch so that the wrong side is identical to the right side. I have this old book on Karelian embroidery that features many different patterns. I decided to use a part of this larger design, which might be a world tree. I'm not sure about the symbolism though. I used three strands from embroidery floss and embroidery needle. Trying to keep the wrong side similar to the right side was not easy. I started from the bottom and walked my way toward the top. In retrospect, it might have been easier to do the outline of the triangular base first and then proceed filling it rather than going row by row, but I managed. Doing the branches and the birds was easier, although I did do some errors with the placement. I took these bush-like features from another part of the pattern and moved them to the sides to fill the area and finally added the year 2020 with cross stitch. I cut out the pocket shape and lined it with some old white sheet cotton. Yay for recycling! I then bound the top of the pocket with a scrap from my seraphim fabric. The back part of the pocket is cotton velveteen from my old press pack project. I folded the top back and sewed it down neatly. Then I finished the sides of the pocket with dark red bias tape. That too was left over from my seraphim dress, that you will soon see. Unfortunately, I didn't have enough bias tape to fold it down with the green velveteen. I sewed down both sides of the bias tape and then made a separate casing for the belt using the seraphim cotton fabric. And here is the finished pocket. Iranian women made their finest aprons out of silk. A long time ago I had found this piece of black silk dupion 50% off in a remnant pile. Even better, this dupion is very fine and taffeta-like, having only a couple of slubs. I had bought a set of instructions for an apron from Soya Murta, and this fabric was slightly too narrow. However, as I'm a smallish person, I thought I could do with a narrower apron. I turned my fabric sideways so that I had the selvage at the bottom and hemmed the sides. Then I proceeded pleating the upper edge. The upper edge should be something like 35 to 40 cm wide, and it took me some experimenting to get the pleats right. The waistband is just a long strip of fabric that is about 20cm or 8 inches longer than the upper edge of the apron. 
I sewed the first strip to the right side and then turned it over and slip stitched it to the wrong side. Unfortunately, I did this while waiting for my son at the dentist so I couldn't film it. The ends of the waistbands are folded back to form loops for the belt. I finished the apron with a strip of lace and a piece of golden braiding at the hem. For the cap, I made a simple linen cap. I made a pattern by gathering a piece of scrap fabric around my head and gathering all the excess fabric into my hand at the back of my head. I cut out the extra fabric and ta-da! I had a pattern. First, I folded the selvage edge and sewed it down. To gather the extra fabric, I sewed a strip of bias tape to the curved edge to make a casing for the tape. However, the first attempt failed. There was just too much fabric to gather and anyway, the cap was still slightly too big. For the second version, I cut the cap slightly smaller and pleated most of that extra length before sewing on the bias tape. Now the cap was successful. The last important accessory is a silk scarf. I ordered the green one on eBay and found the red and blue one at the local flea market. I like the green one more, but I can also use the other one. Here I end this short video. The next time you will see how the actual Seraphine turned out and I will reveal the whole outfit. So remember to subscribe. Thank you for watching and see you soon. Bye!